So I fucking ran up behind him with a hatchet, smash. So a lot of people are calling you a hero because you did. How did he end up here? Three months after he. This is Caleb McGillivray, but most of you know him as Kai, the hatchet wielding hitchhiker. Imagine yourself in the middle of a hostage situation and out of nowhere, this man comes in and intervenes, saving the day. That's the image that was burned into the minds of many Americans at the time. The man not only acted like a hero, but he also spoke like one, saying directly to the camera, no matter what you've done, you deserve respect, even if you make mistakes. Despite the looks of a good Samaritan, as his legend was fed by the media, Kai began to reveal a much darker, disturbed and sick personality to the public. In order to fully understand the events of the murder case against Caleb McGillivray, it's important to have a clear understanding of who he is and where he came from. Caleb McGillivray, also known as Kai, was born in Canada and had a difficult upbringing. He was taken away from his parents at a young age and spent most of his childhood in foster care. Despite these struggles, he was able to graduate from high school and attend college for a short period of time. However, he dropped out of college and began travelling the country as a hitchhiker with no name other than Kai, no possessions other than his backpack and a hatchet. And he was also known for his unique perspective on life. Now, I know what you might be thinking, what does this have to do with a murder case? Well, it's important to remember that everyone has a backstory and everyone has their own unique experiences that shape who they are. And in this case, it's important to understand that Kai's backstory may have played a role in the events that led to eventually becoming a murder. On February the 1st, 2013, Kai met Jet Simmons McBride, a 54-year-old man on a highway outside Bakersfield and asked him for a ride so he could continue his hitchhiking journey. On that fateful morning, McBride picked up Kai and they began a conversation about God, Walmart and numerology. They eventually arrived in Fresno and McBride gave Kai $40 to buy pot. Yes, yes, I know, all the hipster stereotypes condensed in one sentence. However, things took a deadly turn when McBride drove his car into a group of Pacific Gas and Electric workers, injuring one and pinning another against a truck. Witnesses reported McBride emerging from the car screaming, I'm Jesus Christ, making death threats and racial slurs. When a nurse rushed to help the pinned man, McBride grabbed her and threatened to kill her. Kai, who had been on the scene, intervened, taking the keys out of the car to prevent McBride from harming anyone else. He then used his hatchet to fend off McBride, who was attacking a woman at the scene. The incident was caught on camera and Kai's famous interview with local news reporter went viral, giving birth to the Kai the hatchet-wielding hitchhiker legend. And before we go any further, I'd like to know what you think of Kai so far. Something seems strange about him and you know it. No normal person can be so calm after smashing someone's head. A few months later, on Tuesday, May 14th, 2013, a disturbing post appeared on Kai's personal Facebook page, seemingly written by him. What would you do if you woke up with a groggy head, metallic taste in your mouth in a stranger's house? The post went on to ask. What if you realized you had been drugged and sexually assaulted? One of Kai's Facebook friends, Terry Ratliff, responded with a disturbing comment. Find them as fast as I could and smash them with a hatchet or whatever else I could find. Kai responded with a simple, I like your idea. It was hard to know what to make of this exchange. Kai had a history of posting disturbing and dark content on his social media, making it difficult to tell if he was being serious or if it was all just a form of symbolism. What do you think? But it wasn't just this one post that raised eyebrows. Kai had written about wanting to be in a pornographic film, with the profits going to a civil rights group that aims to arm single mothers in poverty-stricken areas with shotguns. Another post described his desire to smash, smash, smash the leader of North Korea dead and even more explicitly beat him to death with a hammer. I know that many of you are fine with such a post, but we have to take into consideration that Kai has done that before in real life to an actual person. Adding to the concern, days earlier, Kai had written a long and detailed post about being sexually and physically abused as a child, and about his family being members of a cult who believed there was a demon inside of him. 
There is no doubt that Kai's unusual background, the first violent encounter, and his social media fame have started to expose his dark and savage appetites. On May 14th in 2013, Joseph Golfrey Jr. met Kai in Times Square. Golfrey, a 73-year-old lawyer and former military man, was well known and respected in the close-knit community of Clark, New Jersey. They left New York together in Galfi's car and headed to his suburban home. Galfi offered Kai a place to stay and food. Kai left Galfi's house the next morning, then returned again that night. When Galfi didn't show up for work on Monday and missed an appointment, his paralegal called some of his friends and neighbours and asked them to check on him. Robert Ellenport, the former mayor of Clark and a longtime friend of Galfi's, arrived to find the bungalow at 46 Starlight Drive dark and quiet. Galfi had heart problems and other health issues. He'd lived alone since the death of the man some knew as his houseboy and employee, and others, like Ellenport, understood to be his partner. Given Galfi's age and health, Ellenport expected the worst when a police officer who responded to the scene emerged from the house looking grim. But Ellenport was speechless when he learned his friend had been murdered. Joseph Galfi had been found face down on the floor of his bedroom dressed only in his underwear and socks. He'd been brutally beaten, with fractures in the bones of his face, neck and ribs, and bleeding in his brain. One of his ears had been torn almost off. Was Chai the last person to see Galfi alive? Was he the person who brutally murdered Galfi in his own home? Chai was arrested three days later in a Greyhound station in Philadelphia. He'd chopped his long hair short with a knife, but had still been recognised by multiple people, both because of his internet fame and the distinctive tattoo on his face. The trial of Kai began on September 9, 2014 in Union County, New Jersey. The prosecution painted a picture of a troubled and violent individual who brutally attacked and murdered Joseph Galfi Jr. in his own home. They presented evidence of Kai's prior violent outbursts, including the Facebook post about wanting to smash someone with a hatchet after being drugged and sexually assaulted. They also highlighted Kai's statements about being a vigilante and going after pedophiles, as well as his tendency for erratic and unpredictable behaviour. The defence argued that Kai had suffered from a traumatic childhood, including sexual and physical abuse, and had a history of mental health issues. They suggested that Galfi had taken advantage of Kai and that the killing was an act of self-defence. The jury heard testimony from multiple witnesses, including Kai's friends and acquaintances, as well as experts on trauma and mental health. After three weeks of testimony, the jury began their deliberation. On October 2, 2014, the jury returned with a verdict of guilty on all counts, including first-degree murder, felony murder, and possession of a weapon for unlawful purpose. Kai was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The verdict brought a sense of closure for the community of Clark, New Jersey and for the family and friends of Joseph Galfi Jr. However, the case also raised questions about the criminal justice system and the treatment of individuals with mental health issues. Innocent all the charges against me. McGilvery looked directly into News 12 New Jersey's camera to say he is not guilty. Locked up since... Kai himself, whilst showing remorse for his actions, maintained that he had acted in self-defence and that he had been wrongfully convicted. He filed an appeal, but it was denied by the higher court. Kai may have captured the hearts and minds of the public with his story of heroism. However, the fairy tale came to a brutal end. I told people that I cut my hair afterwards to change my appearance, but there is physical evidence that I cut my hair well before anything even happened. There is also video surveillance from New Jersey... It's important to remember that behind every viral sensation and internet celebrity, there is a real person with their own struggles and demons. The story of Kai serves as a reminder to not rush to judgment and to always consider the full picture before making assumptions about someone's character.